Now, Europe's Solar Orbiter probe will make its first close pass of the Sun today. It will uh, track by at a distance of just over 77 million kilometres. The probe was launched in February and it's on a mission to understand what makes the Sun behave the way it does. And we can talk about it now to Chris Owen, who's from the UCL Mallard Space Science Laboratory. Uh, Chris, thanks very much for joining us. So just talk us through the significance of what is happening today. Uh, actually, so today is a landmark day for, for two reasons for, for those of us uh, associated with the mission. First of all, as you said, we've, uh, we're on our first orbit after launch in February and we've reached the point on that orbit where we are closest to the sun. Um, so that's, that's, that's a, a big achievement. Uh, I've been watching my instrument getting warmer over the last few, uh, few weeks and now I expect to see it start to get a little bit colder again. But the other reason it's, a, it's an important day is today is actually formally the first day of our cruise phase. We've, uh, we've spent the, the, the few months since launch um, checking out all the instruments, making sure they, they're working. And we completed that exercise somewhat behind time because of the coronavirus. Um, but that, that closed last night and we're on the cruise phase and start taking science data proper um, from, from now, really. And, and in layman's terms, just talk us through what you're trying to find out about the sun. Uh, okay, so the, the, the sun is, uh, is a, uh, well, first of all, it's important to us, obviously, it's, it's the star in our, in our backyard, and we really would like to know how, how it works, and in particular for this mission, uh, we're trying to understand how uh, its magnetic um, properties work. You may know that the Earth's magnetic field is stable and varies on hundreds of thousands of years. The sun's magnetic field varies on timescales as short as ours. Um, and you may have seen some of the, 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 the nice images of the dynamics of that and the interplay that goes on, on the, in the corona of the sun, the upper atmosphere of the sun between the, um, the charged gas and the magnetic field drives what we call the solar wind out into space and, and, and out towards the Earth and the other planets. And that's a very gusty wind uh, and you know, occasionally there are uh, major um, ejections of solar material towards us that can cause some 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 pretty hefty disruption to, to near-Earth space and, and our technology in it. And really, with Solar Orbiter, we're trying to get close to the sun, carrying a set of instruments that will look at the corona and be able to, to view it in different wavelengths of light, but also carrying a set of instruments that, are, that sample the solar wind that's coming out past the spacecraft. So between those two things, we're looking at, the, at, at what's happening on the surface, looking at with the source of the wind, and then seeing the wind coming out past us and really just trying, you know, we'll be trying to connect those two things together to understand exactly how this magnetic um, dynamics of the sun, sun behaves and, and ideally, hopefully, understand the science behind it and be able to predict when the sun is going to, you know, have these, these eruptions that disrupt near Earth space. And, and just tell us, I, I think because of coronavirus, you've had to work from home on all of this. You'd normally be at your operations centre, but you're working from home. Well, that's right. The, this this near-Earth checkout phase, which has turned out to be not so near-Earth checkout phase, should have been over a, a couple of months ago and, and should have all been done from the dedicated facilities in, uh, that ESA has in Darmstadt in Germany. And we got shut out of that pretty early on in the process, so we've had to set up um, systems at home. I've, I've been operating with a couple of computers and four screens, uh, effectively commanding our instruments the other side of Venus from what until a few months ago was my son's nursery room. So he's been evicted and this is now my own local little command centre for our instruments. So mission control in your son's nursery room, that is fantastic. <laughs> that, that's about the long and short of it, yes. <laughs> well, that's the way of the future. Chris Owen, thank you so much for being with us. Really fascinating to talk to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.